enjoy it while it lasts. Um, this is the, the first meeting of all of us since our two new independent members were appointed and it's wonderful to have a full committee because we haven't had one since well before the pandemic and um, it's about time. So I just thought we might begin by just giving a few introductions of ourselves around the table. I can start with that. I'm Susan Blackall. I'm the independent chair of the committee and have been for some time. Um, obviously, I'm not an elected councillor, but uh, I live locally and e ethics and standards are very much an important part of my life. And so it's been a great honour to serve on this this committee. Would you two like to introduce yourselves? One, one, pre if you press the button on the, yeah. This one? Oh. Good afternoon. My name is Celestine Anderson and I am a new member, independent, um, independent member, member of the Standards Committee, just um, elected, so not elected, but appointed, shall I say. So this is our first meeting. Good afternoon, my name is Julia uh, Gandolfo, and like Celestine, I've joined recently as an independent member. Um, and I live locally for about three years. Originally, I'm from Italy, and I'm a data scientist. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Figay. I'm the Chief Whip for Labour Group and Full Council. I'm also... is back. Um, my name is Anthony Okereke. I'm the leader of Greenwich Council. Lovely to meet you all. Welcome. And th I think this is also the first time where we had an all-women um, independent chair, independent independent members. Uh, so congratulations to you guys. It just goes to show how progressive we are in, in, in the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Welcome and love, obviously welcome you to your roles. Thank you. Thanks very much. And yes, it, I, you know, it's, it, it, it wasn't on purpose, but we selected the best candidates and they happen both to be women, but it's nice to have some, some younger members as well. Okay, well, let's see how we go. We might just have to dispense with it. Um, at the beginning too, I would like to personally and have minuted thanks to to you, Azuka, for being our interim director of legal services now for a, a good year, really, isn't it? And, and just to say that particularly over the process of recruiting our two new independent members and, and throughout the year, Azuka has been an enormous support. And um, I just wanted to record our appreciation of all that you do for us. And she has prepared this report that we are considered as our main agenda item this evening. We have one... Um, Member Councillor Hartley, who's given his apologies for his absence, but hopefully we will see him again. Um, I'm not aware of any urgent business that's been brought to our attention. Can I just check, does any member have any personal or financial interest to declare on any items of the agenda? No, I didn't think so. Um, some of you weren't here for the last meeting, and it was just us, wasn't it? <laughs> and, um, are members happy to agree the minutes of the last meeting? Thank you. Do I need to sign anything, those minutes? Yeah. Uh, you let me have them lately, okay. Um, so the main purpose of this evening is to um, update the members of the Standards Committee on the matters within the remit of the committee during the last um, financial year and Azuka has prepared that report, which you've had in advance. And I invite you to, if you want, anything you particularly want to draw our attention to, Azuka. Um, if it's all right with you, Chair, I'll, I'll just take the committee through um, the report. Mindful, we have new members. Um, I think it would be quite useful. Um, so this is the annual report for the Standards Committee um, for 2023-24. 
um, and the report just summarizes um, activities during the last year um, of functions within the remit of the Standards Committee and covers some of the work done by the monitoring officer to promote and maintain high standards um, of conduct by, by members. In terms of the background, so the, the statutory basis is set out in um, the Localism Act 2011, which sets out an ethical standards regime um, and imposes a legal duty on local authorities to promote and maintain standards of conduct. And therefore, that general legal duty underpins everything that's in our Greenwich. Um, so just taking you through um, the report, the terms of reference are in paragraph five, and I don't propose to take you through them unless anyone particularly wants to, <laughs> wants to go through them. So um, I'll turn to, the, to the, the main substance of the report, which starts at paragraph um, 5.2. But I'm going to take it slightly out of sync and just go straight to paragraph um, 5.6 and pick up on, on um, what you said, Chair, at the beginning in relation to the appointment of our two um, new members. Um, we've not, we've had vacancies for a good number of years, so it's, it's really good that finally we have um, two, two new um, independent members um, on this committee. So I'll extend our welcome to you um, as well. So thank you. So turning back to um, paragraph um, 5.2 then. So that talks about the training that's been provided to members um, between 2022 and um, 2024. And if you could turn to um, Appendix A, and you'll see there a table that sets out the extent of the training that we've um, provided. And I'm not proposing to take you through each of the sessions, but just to summarize, um, training has been provided to um, members on a range of topics, um, starting with general governance, um, and the, which provides a real overview um, of local authority, local authority decision making, and where members fit into, into that framework. Um, and then on, in terms of more day-to-day -day operational side of things, um, introduction to um, digital world. I mean, we are now very much in a digital world um, and it's, it's critical um, to the way that Greenwich um, works um, that members be alive to, to the digital um, sphere. And part of, and parcel of that is you'll also see from the appendix training on social media, um, which is really important, not just in terms of um, accessing social media, but knowing how to conduct yourself in, within social media um, and the ramifications of, of using that as a medium. Um, we've also provided training on regulatory matters, so for example, planning and licensing. Um, so, and that training is not just to members of the planning board and licensing um, committees, but to um, a range of, of, of members, more particularly in relation to planning, where we've had a complete overhaul of our planning procedures and have updated our um, constitution to that effect. So um, we rolled out training to all um, members um, earlier on this year. And that's really important because of the quasi-judicial function that members are asked to perform when they sit on planning board and on any of the licensing um, committees. Um, in terms of general um, training, we've provided training on finance and budget, bu budgets, absolutely critical given the um, financial climate in local government at the moment and the um, council's medium term financial um, strategy and the challenges that the council, not just Greenwich, but across the board that um, local authorities are facing. And then one last thing for me to highlight is um, health and safety. It's been very much um, in, in, in the public eye recently in relation to elected um, members, um, MPs and councillors, and generally people in the public eye and so we've done training on um, health and safety at surgeries um, for our, our members. 
Most of the training you'll see um, has been provided in-house, um, and, and that's mindful of achieving value for money. But not just that, it, it ensures that we're able to make sure that the training um, is consistent and sends a consistent message in terms of the council's culture and ethos um, of the council as well. And you'll see from page 31 um, that there's a range of courses that have been attended by members, um, specific um, trainings, um, often to deal with specific roles that individual members are performing. So as an example, um, there were training for, um, as, as it turned out, to be um, the chair of overview and scrutiny. Um, so just to e equip them for the functions um, that they're performing, um, those very um, important functions. Um, going forward in, in terms of training, um, I won't quite call it an audit, but we have reached out to um, members and we're currently doing um, a training needs um, assessment, and hopefully I can update you on that when um, I, I next report. <clears throat> so that's, that's training. Um, obviously, there's the Members' Code of Conduct, and that's at paragraph 5.7 and um, we've had nine complaints during this period. Um, this compares with eight complaints the previous year. Um, one of the nine complaints is still live, but we're hoping to reach a resolution um, shortly. Um, so of those um, received and completed um, in this year, three were not accepted um, on the basis that they fell outside of the Members' Code of Conduct. Um, one complainant just didn't respond to inquiries for clarification, so we were able to close it. Um, one was resolved informally, and then one didn't meet the threshold for um, investigations. Um, currently, um, there are, I, I think that we wouldn't necessarily call them um, code of conduct complaints, Sometimes you get um, complaints and they're referencing code of conduct, but in reality, um, they're not. So we're able to deal with them quite quickly and we don't necessarily include them in these figures. Um, we're talking about those that genuinely fall within, um, within the code. Um, at paragraph 511, you can see that um, there have been no dispensations um, in relation to um, interests. Um, none, none were received at all during the year. So um, I'll stop there if there's any questions before I move on to, well, really next steps. Does anyone want to any ask, ask any questions about what has been? Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Suzuka, for that report. Um, on paragraph 12, five, is it 5.12? Um, it talks about next steps for code of conduct. So I just wanted to ask, do you know what the timeline will be on that, number one? And number two, in your opinion, is the way the Code of Conduct deals with complaints straightforward or a longer process? And can that, does, does it need to be reformed? Thank you. Um, unfortunately, it was programmed for, for last year. Um, I don't have a timeline. Um, for, for, for that, um, but, but as soon as I'm able to program it, then obviously I, I can feed back to the committee members um, informally, because ultimately we'll need to have an informal consultation with the committee members anyway before anything proceeds to um, full council. Um, in terms of the process, is it straightforward? Um, we've tried very, very hard to streamline the process and to, to make it um, focused on the purpose of having the code of conduct. Um, and, and that's very much the mind with which we'll be re carrying out the review. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we'll be definitely looking at it. Um, can I just ask, uh, just, just in general, the, on the planning regulations training, is. I'm talking slightly in, in, in 
relative ignorance, but um, with all the changes that the central government is planning for planning, um, do, you re do you reckon some of that might need to be updated? It may have to be, um, but we'll have to see how the, what the regulations are. Um, the changes were only made, um, I think, February, certainly around about February or, or March, and um, they're just bedding in now. Um, so if the regulations don't come through quickly, I don't think we'll be too, <laughs> too disappointed. Thank you, Zuka. Any other? Yes. I mean, mine's just a comment. First of all, I just want to say I welcome the training that's been provided to members. Obviously, we have to invest in members to be able to do the roles that they need to do on this council. And I think the appendix that attaches the investment that's gone into training is adequately import is, is important and I think it's sufficient. And I think the council needs to build on that to keep training members to be able to do their roles and be, I guess we want members to be powerful, but also uh, manage a healthy tension with officers who so to make sure they hold officers and themselves accountable to the roles they're elected to do. And secondly, I'd just like to say um, that in the grand scale of things, the very fact that we haven't had any um, full reports that have had to come to the standards committees shows um, our elected officials to be acting within, within the code of conduct. Um, and I think that we should celebrate that because actually that's exactly what we want. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. That, that that's very true, and and certainly the number of even the ones that have the number that have even have arisen and never got to as far as us has been quite stable over the years, and and it is a huge credit to the council, to its officers and its elected members that that we do get so few cases. It can make it can make the the role of, of the members sometimes seem a little bit redundant, but it isn't because when we do get one, it's usually very very serious and it, it takes a lot of effort to deal with it. So we should be grateful that that's the case, but particularly grateful that we have a council and an executive that operates with considerable integrity. And that is not true everywhere. So um, credit to, to them from us. Thank you. Did you want to continue then, Azuka? Thank you, Chair. So just um, in terms of the next steps, obviously there'll be um, the, the review, um, which will report back um, here, and ultimately be a, a decision for full council. Um, and I'll confirm a time scale when, when I'm able to. Um, as interim monitoring officer, I'll continue to identify um, and support the training for members. Um, as and when um, appropriate. And as I've said, we have a, a, a training needs assessment um, underway. So we'll okay. be looking keenly to see what members um, have asked for or are identified, together what, with what um, officers as well have identified as areas for um, training. Um, the remainder of the work of the committee will, of course, then be um, very much demand-led, which you've uh, alluded to already, Chair. Um, it's dependent on the number of complaints um, that make it through um, the process. And as you've pointed out, um, our, our, our reputation is such that, um, you know, that very few um, come before you. And, and when they do, then we know that they are, you know, of the serious, very serious nature. Um, in terms of the options um, available, as you know, there's no statutory requirement to provide an annual report, but it's obviously good practice um, um, to do so, and it gives us an opportunity to, to shine a light on the work that we're doing and, and identify any gaps and, and you know, make plans to fill them. Um, equally, there's no requirement for, for this committee um, to report to full council, but you may wish to um, do so and the next um, full council is on the 30th of October if you wish to um, take a report um, yeah. um, to full council. Um, so I, th I think that's probably about as much as I can add to um, the report. So if there's any, any further questions, I'm happy to take them. No questions from anyone? Can I just then ask our, our members 
um, content to note this report and do, I, I take that as agreed, <laughs> and do members agree for the report to be forwarded to full council? And uh, I will just add that I have presented it myself very briefly, just in a few minutes, um, last year, because that was the first year that we had one. Um, I'm very happy to do so if the council wants me to. So I will uh, make a note of that date. Do you know what, is that a Wednesday? Yes. Usually is, isn't it, yeah. And I think that brings us to the end of today's business. Thank you all for attending. I declare the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you.